Adobe releases a new image generation model, but how does it compare to Midjourney and Dolly 3? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. And today we kick off with a fun new tool, something that I think a lot of you listeners will end up using, and that is Firefly's new image model, Firefly Image 2. Adobe senior creative evangelist Chris Kashtanova tweeted yesterday, We released a new model. As a scientist, I am in disbelief that such a model is possible with the small a data set as we had. We compensated artists for training it. We worked very hard on it. Please enjoy. So this was announced at the Adobe Max event. Max is Adobe's big creative event, and it's actually still ongoing today. As part of the announcement, Adobe said that its Image 2 model creates significantly improved images, especially compared to its predecessor. Colors are more vivid, images come in higher resolution, and it's much better with texture and other details. Now, interestingly, in addition to just the new model, Image 2 also comes with a new set of AI-powered editing capabilities. So, for example, photo settings like adjusting depth of field can be added to images after they've been created. Adobe also introduced a feature that allows people to match the outputs of their prompts to either a pre-selected list of images that Adobe provides or by uploading a reference image. Adobe also introduced a variation on the model that was specifically for vector images. This is being built now directly into Illustrator, and from directly inside that application, you can describe the vector graphic that you're looking for, for example, an astronaut dog in a spacesuit, and then have access to all of Illustrator's editing controls right from the same software experience. Ever since this announcement yesterday, the legion of AI content creators have been testing to see how Firefly's Image 2 model compares to Midjourney and Dali. My favorite of these threads came from Chase Lean, at Chase Lean TJ on Twitter, who organized it into a set of different categories. On realistic photos, he found that Firefly 2 was very good at generating photorealistic images, particularly of humans. When it came to product photos, he found a lot of similarity between the three models. Same with interior designs, where there seemed to be parity. Now, when it came to text generation, Dolly 3 continued to be light years ahead of both Midjourney and Adobe. But while Midjourney produced nonsense non-letters, at least Adobe sort of got the R from Rachel in their output based on Chase's prompt. When it came to landscape photos, Chase found that Midjourney was ahead followed by Firefly, but that both were ahead of Dolly 3. And where Adobe's Image 2 really shined was in close-ups and photorealism around humans. Now, the other interesting bit of this announcement, more from a broad societal standpoint, was the new Content Credentials icon as part of the Content Authenticity Initiative. Content Credentials' new icon of transparency is an invisible digital watermark that explains how an image was created, with what software, and when. Now, of course, with these types of standards, it's not just a technology question, but a social adoption question, which is why it was interesting that Adobe announced the number of partners who are adopting this credential, including Microsoft, Publicis, Leica Camera, and Nikon. All in all, some really interesting stuff coming out of Adobe. And I think for me, one of the big questions continues to be, does the fact that Adobe's model was trained on images that they theoretically have rights to change the equation for particularly enterprise or corporate users? Are companies going to start getting notes from their legal department that says, you have to use Firefly, not Midjourney, because that's more legally defensible from an IP standpoint? And more broadly than that, if that does happen, how much space between state-of-the-art and safe is too much for people to comply and go with the safe option? Lots of interesting questions for the near future. Now, moving on to a couple other stories today. Following announcements from both Spotify and YouTube over the past few weeks that they were going to start inserting automated dubbing to videos and other content, Eleven Labs has become the latest startup to launch their own dubbing service. The new tool allows users to upload files or point to something from YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Vimeo, or another URL to then be localized across 29 possible languages. Now, part of the reason that people are excited about Eleven Labs' version of this service is that they're widely considered to have the most advanced voice generation technology, so that when it comes to the promise of preserving the original speaker style, even though they're translating to another language, there's a lot of optimism that Eleven Labs can deliver that. Now, of course, this is a white hot space right now. Wondercraft AI is another company coming out of Y Combinator that does something similar. And so to me, what it all adds up to is a very likely scenario where a few years down the line, it will be simply the standard that when you create content in one language, it's automatically translated and dubbed into other languages as simply a matter of course. In our next story, Business Insider has followed up time releasing their own AI 100, what they're calling the top people in artificial intelligence. Insider says that their considerations included people who were successfully reinventing a business model with AI, tackling some human condition problem to use AI to make people happier, healthier, etc., people who were focused on providing guardrails and checks and balances for the industry. Now, my observation going through this list was that there were a lot more folks from the corporate and enterprise world than, for example, we got on that Time 100 list. And that, frankly, I think a lot of the developers and entrepreneurs out there would like to see. 
I think that's fairly defensible, if for no other reason than what we found over and over again is that a lot of the dynamics of the artificial intelligence space give existing players and incumbents more of a leg up than they've had in previous startup spheres, be that capital and access to compute or existing relationships with customers that create a trust bridge to a new area that uses a lot of customer data, maybe Insider's corporate focus list actually functionally makes sense. Lastly today, a little narrative watch that I have seen as absolutely inevitable. The New York Times published a piece called AI Could Soon Need As Much Electricity As An Entire Country. This begat three or four other mainstream articles talking about the same issue. And of course, for anyone who's lived in the Bitcoin world at all, these research pieces that point to the consumption of energy by countries are an extremely potent headline generator. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't be asking questions about the electricity and compute costs of artificial intelligence. If anything, I think it's another reason to actually ask what we want out of this technology and remember that we as a society get to determine what technology is actually good for us and what we want to leave on the table. But overall, I just think it's interesting that we are now seeing the same sort of energy and climate comparisons that we've seen levied on other technology spaces in the past. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.